uh, this conversation came up in my Twitch chat like a few days ago. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to write this down and put this on the podcast. Let's talk about it, man. Someone asked me, what are the most influential games of the last 10 years? And we had like a brief discussion on Twitch, but I like I wrote the reason I wrote it down is because I wanted to have I wanted to take the time to actually do some research because like I came up with some games at the top of my head, but I was like, yo, 10 years is a long freaking time. Like 10 years, if 10 years, if we're counting from 2019 was 2009, 2009 to 2019, 2009 was that was before the PS4. And so that so that's the Xbox 360 PS3 era all the way to now. So that's like the span, like two generations. Um. So I was like, it was a lot. That's a lot of freaking games. So I had to go back. I literally spent like an hour and a half doing some research. So like, I just want to say this off the top of my head. I apologize ahead of freaking time if I don't remember every fucking game that came out between 2009 and 2019. I did my best, um, but I don't have infinite amount of time. I spent like a couple hours doing some research, trying to figure out um, what are the most influential games the last uh 10 years so like i said 2009 to 2019 um before i get into this list i just want to explain where i'm going with because when we were having this conversation on twitch which that tv slash the black okage uh, a lot of people were kind of misconstruing the word influential or maybe like we all have like different definitions of it because like some people i feel like a lot of people didn't understand the conversation in in the chat they were they were just picking games that they really liked and like my list is mostly games that i don't even really play like a few of them i really i enjoyed but some of them i didn't um i'm strictly going off of influence impact on the culture um did it influence game development um did it influence um how gamers act with one another um like sales don't matter all sales indicate is how popular something is but something that's popular isn't necessarily influential um like how many how many instagram models do you know have like 3.5 million followers because they ass and they titties is out but can't sell two shirts can only sell two t-shirts you're you're not really influential you're just cute um if that makes sense so impact matters to me so now that we got that out the way and i'm gonna explain why i think these games are influential let's talk about it i broke it i actually broke it down into years because it's a lot of games all right so 2009 2009 was a really good year for influential games um the first one that i put on my list for influential is demon souls for those of you unaware i think most people started playing dark souls demon souls was the first in the series it was demon souls then dark souls dark souls 2 and was a bloodborne and then dark souls 3 and all the other spin off of shit so the reason i put demon souls on the list is because without demon souls you wouldn't have the dark souls series and all that shit but also demon souls dark souls we'll just put it together um it's easily one of the inf- most influential games whether you like these games or not just take a look around the gaming industry bro what do we got we got the surge um neo uh Sekiro, um that new star wars game uh the fallen jedi that's dark souls influence demon souls influence like every like action game like in the past couple years has been demon souls influence so i would i would say that this is easily one of the most influential games of the last 10 years from a mechanical standpoint not necessarily like a cultural impact um oh yeah then got bloodborne too not necessarily from a culture impact but it has like its niche people a certain group of people love it and it's been influential on game design i think um the second influential game i got from 2009 is mass effect 2. um mass effect 1 has like a cult following it's personally my favorite in the original trilogy but mass effect 2 is where a lot of people picked it up and mass effect 2 to me was a little bit more influential in terms of game design um because uh uh oh like every rpg including what we just talked about the outer worlds every rpg nowadays has the uh the paragon like renegade uh dialogue trees or whatever um it what mass effect wasn't the first to do that but i think i would argue it's probably what made it popular um and then also i and correct me if i'm wrong i'm pretty sure mass effect 2 was the first rpg at least from what i've seen that did companion quests and like every rpg nowadays has companion quests and then also mass effect 2 like i said most people started with mass effect 2 so then that's when the series really started to boom um that's when you started getting all the crazy in in 7 impact uh everybody cosplaying as like the different characters thane and fucking the all the other different characters and garris and all this shit so i would i would argue mass effect 2 is very influential in the last 10 years in terms of game design as well as like cultural impact um i would put it in the same boat as like demon souls dark souls very niche 
a little bit a little bit less niche than dark souls i think a little it's a little bit more mainstream but even still like i wouldn't it's influential that's the point um second second influential or well, third influential game 2009 league of legends league come on bro whether i i first of all let's get some straight i can't stand league of legends i don't like this clickety clackety ass game fucking you just sit on your mouse i just closed my fucking show notes oh my god thank god i'm, I'm glad i didn't fucking click and close this damn recording let me make sure yeah i'm still recording okay oh uh, okay my show notes are back. <laughs> League of Legends, I can't stand this fucking game, but you cannot deny it is one of the most influential games of the last 10 years. The entire esports fucking, well, I don't want to say entire because CSGO had a following. CSGO was like the grandfather of like esports, but it didn't really go mainstream until League of Legends. Um, so there's that. Then think about how it influenced game design. Um, every every company's got a moba nowadays because of league of legends and how popular and they see how much money it makes um cosplay is cosplaying league of legend characters is big people love cosplaying it so it has that cultural impact um so across the board league of legends is easily one of the most influential also i would argue that it um it influenced like pricing models business models with their free-to-play model uh they showed that you can do a free-to-play game you can just make the entire game free and then charge for skins and stuff. So that's very influential. There's there's a ton of ways when you think about it. League of Legends influence gaming today from cultural to business to game design. Um, and then last but not least for 2009, I got Batman Arkham Asylum. Yeah, you forgot that game came out. This one's easy. Um, first of all, before Batman Arkham Asylum, besides maybe Spider-Man 2, superhero games fucking suck uh so batman arkham asylum is influential for one reason and one reason only game mechanics uh <laughs> every every like third person action game since arkham asylum has came out has ripped off arkham asylum and if you know what i'm talking about if you played any whether you played asylum or not asylum arkham city origins any arkham knight if you played any of the batman arkham series you know the, the combat system with the whole press uh, on the xbox at least uh you press y to counter and then x to attack or whatever um and it's like kind of like a rhythm based combat and you can jump over people and combo and string things together um fucking spider-man copied that shit um like that's that's the easiest one i can think of off the top of my head but like every third person action game has copied batman arkham's combat system um freaking i think i remember somebody saying that like one of the old spider-man games was the first to do it but i don't remember that like i even if that's true arkham is what made it popular it's 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 heavily impacted game design um moving on to 2010 2010 is a little bit weaker but uh this is what i got for 2010 nba 2k 11 very influential uh nba 2k has been around since dreamcast but 2k is 11 is what kind of started as the catalyst um for like what made 2k popular this is when nba live was kind of on the decline 2k 11 came out and this is the one with the jordan with jordan on the cover this is when they had the cruise on there and shit like that um this is kind of what started the 2k craze um which is we'll further get into and we'll talk about in 2013 that's why i would call it influential it can it changed game design for like basketball games um and then uh fifa i put fifa on 2010 fifa I, okay, so I wanted to put FIFA. I didn't know what year to put it because I don't play FIFA, but I know all about it. And I'm pretty sure FIFA was the first game in the sports genre to include that ultimate team shit. Um, and this is where we're going to talk about something negatively influential because you can be influential both ways. Um, I don't know what year it was, but I'm just going to put it on the 2010. Um, so I apologize for not knowing which FIFA it was. Whatever FIFA was the first one to include fucking ultimate team. Um, that's very influential. Because once EA saw how much money, and for those of you unaware, know what Ultimate Team is, it's the same as like my team in 2K or Madden's Ultimate Team or whatever. Where basically you buy packs, loot crates, and they give you certain players so you can create your dream team. But it's it's pay to win. You got to pay for the players or whatever packs. Um, FIFA is what made that shit popular. For those of you unaware, um, and then it influenced Madden, 2K, and every other freaking sports game. So I think that's a very influential game that people kind of sleep on, uh, even though it was a bad influence, uh, but people bought the shit. So it is what it is. I don't know. I, I don't know. Now that I'm looking at NBA 2K11, I don't know. I, I might have to take that one off the list. Like it was influential, but the next one I'm going to talk about, the next 2K I'm going to talk about is probably a little bit more. I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll put that in the yellow zone. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I went through 2011's releases. I couldn't really find nothing. So we're moving on to 2012. 
2012, Mass Effect 3. <sighs> Very influential. Um, the reason I put this one on the list is Mass Effect 3 proved that gamers had a voice, right? Like that whole phrase, rise up gamers. Like that shit probably came from Mass Effect 3, bro, because that ending was fucking ass in Mass Effect 3. And it was so fucking bad. They made Bioware go back and change the ending. I don't think even to this day, I don't know any game that was like people hated the ending that much. They said, no, fix it. They held a gun to fix this shit. <laughs> fucking so they made Bioware and they made Bioware go back and fucking change the ending. And that is very influential because I think that's the first time in the Internet age that like gamers realize like, yo, we really have a voice in this shit. And I feel like gamers since Mass Effect 3 gamers have become more vocal about what they want from their experiences. And that's, I guess, another negative influence. That's how I think Mass Effect influenced gaming culture, Mass Effect 3. Um, so that's why I put that one on the list. I mean, like this game, had, this game had people so fucking pissed. And you think I'm playing? Go on YouTube and search the indoctrination theory. Somebody made an hour long documentary trying to explain why the ending to Mass Effect Three wasn't bullshit and it made complete sense. And the developers came out and said that, that it's not his theory wasn't true, but it was still very interesting, and very well made. Um, so that's how I think Mass Effect Three influenced gaming. Um, the second one from a 2012 release, Borderlands Two. Um, I was conflicted. I was like, I, I almost put the original Borderlands on there, but I was like, you know what? We're going to go with Borderlands 2 because I think Borderlands 2 is where the series really took off. Uh, Borderlands 2 is very influential in gaming because it's the godfather of looter shooters. Without Borderlands 2, I'd argue we'd have no Destiny. Um, we'd have no Anthem, which I guess is a good thing for a lot of people. <laughs> um, what's another looter shooter? That new uh, Marvel Avengers game from uh, Square Enix. We wouldn't have that. Like all these looter shooters that we have nowadays, uh, Remnant of Ashes, I think. Is that a, is that a looter shooter? No, that's a, that's a Dark Souls. Oh, well, there, never mind. That's how Demon Souls in 2009. Without Demon Souls, there would be no Remnant of Ashes. There you go. I just further proved my point. Uh, back to 2012, though. Um, yeah, Borderlands 2 is very, very, very influential. Um, this one's a little bit off the beaten path. I'm not gonna lie. Let me take a swig of this water, bro. My voice. <sighs> this one's off a little bit, a little bit of beaten path. But 2012, a very influential game release I put on is you guys remember that game, that indie game Journey? You played as that like red demon floating thing, floating through the sand and shit. The game was like two hours long. If you go back and watch the reviews for that game, fucking games media just. Praise that game out the woo -ah. This is the deepest game that we've ever seen. And blah, 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 blah. I never played that shit. I'm never going to play that shit because I'm not in the fake deep shit. But that being said, I still would say it's very influential for one reason and one reason only. Um, before that, like indie games were a thing like on Steam and like console. But I think Journey was like the catalyst to show people that, hey, you know, you don't have to be a triple A developer. You can make it as an indie developer and you can create a different experience that people would enjoy. Like I, I'd argue that like without Journey, we wouldn't have games like, I don't know, Bastion or um, what's that? What uh, what's that game with the Wispy Willow? What, what was that shit? Uh, Wispy Xbox. What's that fucking game with that little blue floating thing? Uh, da -da -da -da. Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking Oh my God, it's going to fucking drive me crazy. What was that game called? I played the game too. Platformer, Xbox, Wispy. I'm just gonna type Willows. Fucking, we wouldn't have Cuphead. Oh, Ori in the Blind Forest. There we go. We wouldn't have Ori in the Blind Forest. We wouldn't have fucking Cuphead. Like all these cool little kind of different indie games. That wasn't really a thing like 10 years ago. Um, and indie studios have become on the rise and they offer different experiences. One of my favorite indie games is, um, what's that damn Sonic game? I'm actually looking forward to the. Uh, it's not fucking god damn it I, i'm having a brain fart i didn't get enough sleep last night um i'm actually gonna open do i want to open my steam up no i don't want to open my steam oh you know what i put it in my pocket I put it in my story pockets and then i need to log in cool. but yeah that's how i think um that's how i think journey influenced the gaming industry oh don't fucking save it and of course i'm not logged in doesn't want to fuck it, bro. Get over it. Y'all get the point. I, I'm over. I'm not gonna look up that game. Uh, 2012 also was the release of CS:GO Counter Strike GO. I mean, that kind of that game kind of speaks for itself, bro. Very influential. Um, oh, you know what? I just I just remembered. 
going back to 2009 i apologize i'm doing that but going back to league of legends one more thing that i forgot to add to this um league of legends Le w w without league of legends there would be no twitch uh for those of you unaware um because i've been on twitch since 2013 twitch launched in 2011 when it converted from justin tv to twitch um and in the early twitch days twitch was basically a league of legends site so league of legends and twitch went hand in hand so the rise of the rise of twitch is also the thing of league of legends it's also thanks to league of legends and league of legends rise is also thanks to twitch like they were like a symbiote kind of relationship so without that you wouldn't make without league of legends you probably wouldn't have seen some of your favorite streamers a lot of your favorite streamers started off playing and they branched off into other things my bad all right going back to 2012 csgo um without csgo i would argue the same thing like uh it influenced twitch but also um it influenced a lot of game design um freaking the way that the game works um also their business practices also without csgo we wouldn't have been able to get csgo lotto we wouldn't have been able to get all them great betting sites where people pretend to bet 50 dollars and then they actually own the website so that's another negative influence um <laughs> Oh, fucking the loots and the pack of them. They did that shit too. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's influence. Um, and then another, another dark horse from 2012, uh, the walking dead season one. I would say that's very influential, bro. Point and click games have been a thing since the early nineties, since PC gaming has existed, to be honest, the eighties actually. Um, but walking dead season one brought it back. I think like point and click games were dead. Then fucking Lee, Lee and Clementine's Adventures pulling on your heartstrings. Then we got a whole bunch of games like the Wolf Among Us, the Batman game, freaking um, what's the names? Was something Rain? What was that shit called? Uh, Detroit Become Human. Um, there's so many. What, what, what's the what's the what's the game where you play the little teenager and fucking you travel back in time and shit? What's that game called? Uh, Life is Strange. All these games, you would not, they would not exist if it wasn't for The Walking Dead popping off. And that influenced game design. Uh, people saw, oh, there's money in this type of genre. We can create more story driven experiences where people just, you know, do QTEs and click what they want to do. So I would argue that had influence over the community. Oh, excuse me. And then also cosplay. People love cosplay and Clementine. Um, by the way, did y'all know Clementine was black? I did not know, bro. I, I did not know that until like a year ago when Ethos told me. I was like, what the fuck? She's black? Why she's like a little white girl, bro? Yo, game developers, if y'all gonna make little black babies, put some black skin on that black baby. I'm just saying, damn. Um, 2013. Uh, I only had one game on this list, and that was NBA 2K14. Um, this one was influential for negative reasons. Well, two reasons. Uh one negative one uh, i can argue they're both negative actually <laughs> so the first one is maybe i'm wrong it might have been 2k13 but i'm pretty sure it was nba 2k14 which was the first game to in um bring it to bring vc into the game virtual currency because for those of you unaware who haven't been playing 2k for a long time it used to be a point it used to just be stat points you used to just play the game you grind your character and you unlock stat points then they introduced vc into the game and basically the game became completely pay to win where yeah you could grind your character but they made it impossible to grind your character so then it was it's like psychology they uh basically made you they tempted you into buying vc that so that you can upgrade your character so then you had the day the game came out you had people running around 85 overall 90s and shit on day one because they basically paid for their player which is some bullshit so that was a negative influence um and that 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 influenced 2k14 influenced the rest of the nba 2k to where each year it's gotten worse and worse and worse and i remember when 2k14 came out i remember telling people like yo don't buy this fucking don't buy this shit don't buy this fucking vc because this shit is a trap they are testing the waters and people you know people dip their toes in it people dip their toes in it and now it's getting worse and worse people fall to peer pressure uh, oh just buy some vc and it's made the game worse um it's also influential in a sense 2k14 was definitely the first year they introduced the park most people didn't even know because they didn't have ps4s or xbox ones that there was a park mode in there i didn't even know there was a park mode in nba 2k14 uh, i found it by accident i was like shuffling through the menus and then i accidentally clicked my park and then it loaded me into this shit i was like what is this shit i was like oh people are, like running around and shit and then i found it had voice chat and that's when jigaboo jones was born um i was like yo this mode is kind of fun and now 2k 15 and 16 was when people actually really started to discover the park um and I, so that's like a negative influence because then that's when the youtube era 2k 14 was like the start the real start of the youtube era for 2k and that's that's an influence that's influential because the 2k community is huge on youtube um and the park is the birth of it which came from 2k 14 so that's how i think that influenced the community and then also 
like look at look at fifa fifa came out with their volta mode the little street mode that's a copy of fucking 2k's park so it's, it's influencing game design as well um 2014 destiny destiny is the baby of borderlands but destiny is also influential in itself because everybody's copying destiny all these fucking looter shooters with the shared world um the different stats and the bonuses and shit in the story you can you can put borderlands and destiny together but i mean like i feel like that's an obvious one whether you like that game or not destiny is very influential um they they have their own fucking conventions now you can't say it doesn't have they have guardian con down in florida every year that's influence that's impact the way people are cosplaying the characters that's impact um titanfall titanfall very influential 2014 titanfall is just influential from a game design standpoint not from a cultural impact i don't think i personally love titanfall specifically titanfall 2 i like the first one too it didn't have enough content but the first one was good too but titanfall is influential from a game point uh, a gameplay standpoint because like i don't know if y'all remember after titanfall came out like every shooter had a wall kind of wall running mechanic in it um just straight ripped off titanfall 2 especially fucking black ops 3 and that was a good game but it, it ripped off titanfall come on guys so from a gameplay standpoint titanfall was one of the more influential games um and then also without titanfall we wouldn't have gotten apex legends so even though it's the same company it did influence something influence game design it influenced more games so i mean you gotta throw that on there you gotta throw that on there um 2015 i didn't have anything but 2016 uh, i got one game and that's overwatch um when over after overwatch came out every game became a freaking what is it a hero shooter um a team-based hero shooter so there's that influence um everybody cosplays as diva and freaking uh, tracer and freaking reaper go to a convention you're gonna find a million different fucking divas i swear to god because they all go on amazon and they order a little tight ass suit so they can show their ass off and i and i'd be looking so <laughs> oh it definitely had an impact on the community not only from a gameplay standpoint but also from like a, a cultural impact people love the characters in overwatch you can't deny that overwatch is very influential and then also it pushes esports forward um from what I hear, though, the, the Overwatch League isn't doing the best right now. But I mean, at one point, it was one of the biggest things. It was on the front page of Twitch. Overwatch 2 is coming out. They had BlizzCon. Um, you freaking saw so, I me. Mean, you got you got the Overwatch in there. And then the last year that I have, because I couldn't find anything for 2018 and 2019 has been kind of rough to me. Uh, 2017 PUBG. I know it's fun to shit on PUBG, but at one point, PUBG was the top battle royale game um h1z1 was the first to really like do it but PUBG was the one that brought it to the forefront to the mainstream it's the one that got it right the first time and i didn't put 500 hours into this game by accident um fucking the PUBG era on twitch was great very very influential to the twitch community very influential to game design because everybody's a fucking everybody has a battle royale like um and you know it's funny we're gonna talk about fortnite next i wasn't gonna put this on the list but then i thought about it and i decided to put it on. um without PUBG, fortnite would not have existed um people for those of you unaware fortnite was originally a um tower defense game like the crazy thing about fortnite i think i told this story on stream but i'll tell it again just to document it for the podcast i remember when paragon was popping off for those of you unaware <clears throat> epic games the creators of fortnite before Fortnite popped off, they had another game that they were working on called Paragon. It was a third person MOBA. Um, and that was their like bread and butter that they were really pushing for like two and a half years. And I remember they flew me and a few members of GI out to Epic Studios in North Carolina for a Paragon event where they were showing us what they were working on, this that uh for the future of Paragon. They were they were really they were trying to build up the Paragon community from a grassroots because at this point the game was in alpha and beta. Um it wasn't fully released. Um so we went to this event learned more about the future of paragon and stuff and then there was a one point where we were in epic studios and they decided to give us a tour of the studio and i remember they were showing us some statistics on like on their computer of like ps4 players to pc players in terms of ratio i remember i turned to my left and there was like a little room with maybe three computers in there and a couple developers and i asked one of the um what's the word i'm looking for one of the community managers at epic i was like yo what are they working on in there because the door was open it wasn't closed it was clearly it was an unreleased game the door was open and you could see like a little it was it was it was fortnite um he's like oh that's our game fortnite um it's, a, it's another game that we're working on he's like matter of fact <clears throat> he's like before you guys go make sure to give me your emails um he's like i'm gonna send you guys some codes for the closed alpha so you can check it out they 
I'm bro. They were dead ass begging us to play Fortnite. This is before the battle royale even existed. This was when it was just save the world. Before it was called save the world, it was just called Fortnite. It was just a tower defense game. Fucking battle royale was never in the plans for Fortnite. Never. They were begging us to play that fucking game. And I remember me and like either was like, look at it, we just like laughing. Now we gonna play Paragon. Paragon here to stay. We love this game. <clears throat> Long and behold, Fortnite ended up killing Paragon. But anyway, um, that's beside the point. Fortnite would have never existed if PUBG wasn't so popular. PUBG caused competition, which created Fortnite. Um, PUBG influenced a lot of games. All these fucking battle royale games. That's game design. Freaking co people cosplaying with the frying pan and shit. That's impact. And I would argue PUBG would still be the number one battle royale game to this day if they would have spent more time optimizing their game instead of rushing out content. <clears throat> And if they would have went free to play when they saw Fortnite was free to play, you know, motherfuckers love free shit. They should have switched it up and made it free to play. They could have reimbursed the people who paid the $30 with like some extra clothes or something like a like a founder's pack or something like that to make people feel better about paying that $30 and then make it free to play for everybody else just to compete with Fortnite. Um, so PUBG was definitely influential. Like I said, I didn't put 500 hours into that game by accident i know it's cool to make fun of it now because it's kind of fallen by the wayside but it was very influential at one point um i remember people were talking about making a game of the year when it was still in beta uh, in 2017 and then let's get into fortnite originally when i talked about this on twitch i was not going to put fortnite on the list people were asking me what i think about fortnite and everybody kept saying about how popular it was or whatever and my counter argument to that my original counter argument to that was like just because it's popular doesn't mean it's influential like fortnite would not exist if it wasn't for the success of PUBG, and that's why PUBG is influential but as i was making my show notes i fell back and i i still i, I thought about it and i was like okay you know what it may have not been influential from a game design standpoint because Fortnite is just a straight ripoff besides the building mechanics. Um, but I thought about it. I was like, you know what? It is influential from a cultural standpoint. It is one of the most influential games. So I was like, I'm going to put Fortnite on the list, even though I can't stand this game. And you know what made me think about it? The other day I was in the, uh, the, the grocery store, right? And I'm looking uh, at drinks or whatever, you know, I like to get to, you know, the, you know, the, the crayon, the crayon apple, you know, nothing too crazy, nothing too crazy. And there was this dad and there was this kid and his dad uh, in the aisle next to me. And the kid started doing one of them weird ass Fortnite dances. And like, I looked at it like, well, which one was it? It's the one where like you move your arms behind your, you move your hips and your arms at the same time, all stiff and shit. I forgot what it's called. I don't know. I don't know them damn dances. I'm old. Um, but he was doing one of them Fortnite dances. And I looked at it and I was like, yeah, this kid definitely, it, it's crazy that we can be out in public and a kid starts doing a dance. And I'll be like, yeah, this kid definitely plays Fortnite. I was like, and then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? That's, that's influence because they brought that, they brought them dances into the real world. So I was like, even though, even though I can't stand the game, that's undeniable influence. A fucking, then you got people like Ninja uh, hosting New Year's events and shit like that. That's influence. That's influence. I was like, you know what? Fortnite is one of the most influential games, just not from a gameplay standpoint. Like, uh, like I said, the building is unique, but I think it made a big cultural impact. And thanks for watching my video. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you'll never miss another video. Also, consider pledging my Patreon. It helps keep the lights on. There's a link in the description box below. Peace.